Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone watching. It's time for the Losers Bracket semifinals between Malashevsky and Kriller. Winner of this match advances into the top three to face the loser of Enry versus Worst HR player in the Winner's Bracket Finals, and the loser is out of the tournament in fourth place. I'm DL. I'm going to be joined for this match with Vordy. Good morning, or rather, good evening. Hey, good evening, Dio. Yeah, I'm really keen for this match. We saw this exact same uh, matchup earlier, I believe, in quarterfinals, Malashevsky Kriller uh, with Malashevsky winning 6-2-1. But honestly, even though normally I would anticipate Malashevsky to be stronger uh, against a player like Kriller on a harder pool, um, with both of these players already having a match um, at this round, I'm pretty keen because there's some there's some Krilla scores here that I think in in a few cases beat out Malashevsky like the DT1 or in some cases it's really really strong. So I'm hoping for a really close match here, Dia. Yeah, Krilla's really showed up this tournament. He's been playing super well um, and has had pretty little competition so far overall. You actually see double tapping bans from both of these players as we get started. Um, and just a quick reminder, given that uh, Malashevsky versus Emrek was delayed, uh, we would not have been able to broadcast the entirety of winner's finals before this match started. Uh, so we chose to record the match instead, and we'll be broadcasting it with live commentary at 15 UTC or whenever this match finishes. Uh, so stick around after this. We'll have the winner's finals between Enry versus Worst Age our player on this channel directly afterwards with live commentary once again. Um, but yeah, these are uh, interesting bands. I do think the Nomad 2 band versus Malashevsky is really, really strong. And Kriller generally does have some pretty good ability to kind of mash through that super high BPM stuff. Um, and Over the Flood definitely qualifies as that. Both of these players, though, very, very strong on this kind of pick that is the first pick for Malashevsky. Tech in the Nomad 4, Slider Tech in particular. Lots of flow low aim in this map as well. I think a little bit more of the stream and flow aim than you'd usually expect for an Omad 4 at this level. Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, because they already both played matches, Malashevsky already knows Kriller's score on the DT2. Kriller getting a little bit over 400k. Not high in the act department, but 400k on a DT2 of this difficulty is still pretty respectable. Malashevsky may be a bit, uh, you know, intimidated by it. But this Nomad 4, as you mentioned, very flow -aim heavy. Lots of slider streams that get really, really tricky. Um, and, I mean, both of these players are so unbelievably good at tech. We saw this tech matchup. Malashevsky, I believe, potentially seeing the tech matchup uh, in the easier pool against Kriller, but let's see if Kriller can make the magic happen this time around. Let's see, early act lead for Malashevsky as we get started with the early sliders, uh, but not a huge act drop for Kriller either, still up at 98, so not bad accuracy for him as well, and that's kind of what you expect between these two is a pretty similar level of competence on this. Malashevsky maybe with the slight edge, especially as the pools get harder and harder. We've seen how well Malashevsky scales into the later stages of basically every tournament and never really seems to drop off in terms of skill on these tech picks. And that is a crash You're from Malashevsky oh, in the first no. quarter of the map, though. Um, so I think that may be able to get replayed. We'll have to see, but uh, it looked like it was right at the first quarter of the map. Kriller, though, is still full comboing, and I think that is an abort, uh, given that the client has stopped playing. So I think we are going to get to see a replay on this Nomad 4. The Malachevsky computer incident strikes again. Luckily, this time it was early enough that I think, as you mentioned, we'll be, we'll be able to see the replay, but a little bit unfortunate. I am praying that it doesn't happen uh, too much more often. I don't... I, I think that... Does Malach only get one of those? Um, um, the entirety I... of the match. I do not know, actually. Uh, I'm not a referee, so I did not yeah. bother looking at the uh, at the rules for that. That is, uh, yeah. as as a wise man once said, not my problem. Um, so we're gonna have to see. Uh, maybe we'll get a double check on the rules there in the meantime. But yeah, Malachevsky's been having a lot of these uh, computer issues and crashes throughout the weekend. Um, I know a couple players have been complaining of like some lag spikes since the last OS update, uh, but nothing like the crashes that Malachevsky has been having. So uh, hopefully he can get that checked out and uh, maybe fixed before next weekend, uh, assuming that he does make it through this match. I mean, hopefully he gets it, uh, you know, sorted out for the rest of this in in entirety of the match just so he can get a, get a good, clean slate. Apparently, Malashevsky went offline. Potentially, it's not necessarily computer issues, but internet issues. So 
We'll have to be waiting for him to get back in the lobby. Yeah, at the, at the point of this connection with two FCs, uh, basically, but you know, a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, and it does. Uh, I did double check the rules here. It is uh, one replay per match, so that is going to be the one replay for Malashevsky. Unfortunately, yeah, it seems like internet issues as he is uh, completely offline on OS um, and is still offline at the moment. So I think that was just an internet crash or something. Uh, we'll have to see. Hopefully we get him back in as well. If we have double delays on both of his matches, that is actually the most tragic way for this weekend to start oh, off. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we in the meantime, let's talk about the match overall because we basically got right into it, right? Um, you said you had kind of compared the MP links between both of these players from uh, their scores in the previous matches. Reminder, uh, if you're just tuning into this, that Malashevsky has already played one match versus Emrek. Uh, and Kriller has already played one match versus MCY4 this weekend. Uh, both MREC and MCY4 are eliminated from the tournament as these are loser's bracket matches that we're talking about. Um, and before we went into the weekend, the kind of expectation is that the uh, winner of Malachowski versus MREC would just win regardless of who made it through uh, Kriller versus MCY4. Um, but based on the MP links, Kriller has been putting up some really, really solid scores. Um, and even after the... Uh, even after the uh, disconnect here, it, se it seemed like they were pretty evenly matched. I mean, Kriller was still FCing, Malashevsky was still FCing, so it was slated to be a very close Nomad 4 at the start. Um, and we do uh, seemingly now have a uh, confirmation of what's going on. Um, and apparently Malashevsky was able to finish the map uh, and did actually end up uh, finishing out the Nomad 4 in lobby. Um, yeah, I think what happened was yeah. when the... I believe the match got aborted. Um, so obviously Krilder couldn't play the rest of the map since it got aborted. But I think at that point, Malashevsky already was disconnected from the lobby, so he was able to finish it in solo. And he got 720k, apparently, which 720k is an absolutely ridiculous score to get on the Snowmod 4. Uh, I think that completely destroys his uh, score from earlier. Um, against Emrek, he got 422k, so getting 720k is almost a definite win, unless Krillard also goes crazy. I don't know what the procedure is from here. If uh, Do they both play it again, or if Krillard plays it solo? Uh, we'll find um. out. Yeah, not sure. Uh, we're just kind of waiting on updates for now. Um, apparently, Malashevsky did DC from the lobby as well. Um, like, he was not actually in the lobby when he finished playing it out. So uh, his internet did crash enough for him to DC from the lobby rather than just from uh, from the game entirely. And apparently when he finished out, uh, he does have the local score and everything. But I think this will probably still just get replayed. Um, we'll we'll see exactly what the ruling is here because I, I think probably what will happen is it'll just get replayed because he did actually disconnect from the lobby entirely. Yeah, and I, I think because you know Kriller wasn't able to finish his his score because it was aborted on his side. I, I assume you're just replaying it. Um, I mean considering. If Malice, you know, did get 720k, which I assume he did, he's definitely, uh, he's definitely feeling the tech spirit, because that is insane. So let's see if he can replicate it once again. But now we are back into it, and let's hopefully get a bit of our If you just get 720k and you get to play it again afterwards, uh, surely you're feeling good about how this pick is going to go uh, for Malashevsky. Once again, pretty similar start to the map. 1-100 for Malashevsky, about 98 act for Kriller. Both of them starting off pretty similarly to how we started off uh, on the original run of the map. Slider aim coming through, a finger control on the buzz sliders coming through, slider streams and longer streams as well on this map coming through. Another flow aim tripping anyone up at the moment. But there's actually an early miss for Malashevsky. And now Kriller still on the FC. Worse accuracy though, does find a slider break right afterwards. So advantage still in the favor of Malashevsky off the accuracy despite the early miss. It's actually interesting, the spot Malice just missed here on, I believe, is exactly where the map disconnected the first time. So. Uh, Funny how that happens, but 
Malice now going to be taking up the advantage as Fielder breaks, and that act lead is going to do wonders for him. So even with that break, he's still going to be quite ahead in score. Will likely not be repeating that 720k, but still on pace to win this point. I mean, it's still possible to repeat it. You miss early and then you just FC the rest. With this kind of accuracy, it's entirely possible to get close to that 700k mark or above it. Um, so definitely possible that we see that. A little bit of free combo here for both players in the middle. Again, favoring Malashevsky with the better act and slightly higher combo. Uh, so still going strong for him at the start of this match. Two thirds of the way into the map now, just waiting for it to pick up once again with a little bit more of the slow section here and a little bit more free combo, a little bit more free score lead for Malashevsky through the middle of the map. And I think right now Kriller as well is uh, doing a much better performance. He did play this map against MCY4 and he ended ended the map with 302k. He's already about to surpass that by 100k score and there's still a quarter of the map left to go. So this is improvements from both players. Both of them breaking on that pattern Probably not too far behind, but it's going to be tough for him to find that score gap on this really, really tough section, especially with those breaks. Yeah, this ending is just insanely difficult. Kriller finding multiple breaks, Malashevsky finding a couple of them as well, but still actually extending that score lead now up to 60k. And that's kind of what you expect here at the end. Again, we talk about Malashevsky as one of the very few players who can stand up to scaling through in, into nine-star pools. Uh, and as the map gets harder and harder, you kind of see that come out once again, maintaining very good act, keeping the score lead up around that 60k mark and a win on the first pick, regardless of the disconnect for Malashevsky. But I mean, a really close pick that was 517 to 458k, ignoring the, you know, original score Malice would have set. Um, that, this is this comparison we are seeing right here is super close. Two misses, two misses, very similar combo. Uh, you know, Malice would just a slight combo and act advantage, but considering this was Malashevsky's first pick, you know, Kriller is here uh, playing at a very high level as well. So if he gets some good picks of his own, this could definitely go the distance, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, tech is one of the areas where you kind of expect these two players to be relatively close. Kriller uh, made a name for himself as one of the best tech players in Germany, as one of the you know few really, really strong gimmick players in that country for the US World Cup before you know, he kind of became this all-rounder who carries their World Cup team through many of their points. Uh, his original role was as that reading and tech specialist. So uh, makes a lot of sense for Kriller to still do very well on that Nomad 4 pick. Malashevsky does win out on it in the end. Um, but again, you see Kriller pick into this Nomad 3, which I think both of these players are going to be pretty happy to play here. Both of them very, very strong on the alt and the aim control here. I mean, yes, such is the plight of playing tournaments at this high level your opponent is likely going to be good at pretty much everything um maybe not as comfortable as you are but still proficient enough to put up a good fight against an opponent like Malachevsky. there's really nothing you're picking that he's going to be blindsided on as we find the first break from Kriller here Malas holding on through this insanely difficult intro and i believe this is a relatively short nap as well 223 but malice is just eating up these early patterns as Kriller is finding multiple misses I mean, you can't blame him for finding these misses early on. These patterns are absolutely ridiculous. The spacing on all of these is insane. The cut streams in between. There are so many swaps in kind of what sort of aim control you are expected to have in this map that being able to hit all of it is really a testament to just how good of a score this is for Malashevsky. Already ahead by a hundred thousand score on this nomad 3 as you said Vori, a very very short map we get a little bit more free combo here a little bit more free score for malashevsky to accrue as we get into the second half of this couple of uh, tricky patterns in this slower section though some of the cuts some of the uh kind of back and forth aim control on some of these as well so it's not over yet but big lead for Malashevsky now up 160,000 score and still climbing as the spacing in the section just not as high now back into the harder parts of the map again it's all on Kriller to hold if he can FC this back half and pray for a miss from Malashevsky it is still winnable but he finds the miss and Malashevsky is still going another miss for Kriller and Malashevsky is just 
FCing, no issue. 97 accuracy, having to cheese a little bit of it with a lower accuracy, but still holding on to the FC. What is this score? As he finally, oh, finally finds man. a miss right near the end of the map, but what a ridiculous play. 770k by the time he finally drops a miss at the end of the map. That is an absurd score on this Nomad 3. Yeah, that is... That isn't... I mean... This is just another instance of Malashevsky upscoring significantly. I mean, he got 422k on this last time, which but is a score Krill would have beaten with that 469k, but out of nowhere getting a near FC on a map that is does not give you a single iota of time to really recover. Uh, so many missable patterns in Malashevsky over a 1k combo. He seems to have toggled even greater after that Emrick match and is now just on a tear. Kriller, you know... You know, upscoring, I, I believe, a little bit as well, but it's just not enough against that standout performance from Malashevsky. Yeah, I mean, what do you what do you do, right? Like you're upscoring yourself, you're doing better than your opponent did previously in the last match that he played versus Emrek, um, and he just nearly doubles the score. It goes from 400k to nearly 800k. Uh, so there's just not much you can do there, and I, I think this is. Kind of the story of loser's bracket for a lot of players is Malashevsky is, uh, you know, you're expecting the upscore for both players, uh, typically in the second match of the weekend, if you are in loser's bracket, uh, speaking from experience and from seeing uh, a lot of matches in loser's bracket over the years, uh, typically players will just do better in their second loser's bracket match of the weekend. It's the extra practice, it's the extra comfort on the pool. Um, but once again, I think we're in for a treat with this Nomad 6 AR6 reading pick on Malashevsky's side. Uh, picking into that low pro trait reading once again. Picked this versus Emrek and had a fantastic score. I think this is the one where he DC'd partway through it is, it is, in yeah. the previous match, but he was full comboing at the time he DC'd, uh, and the score difference was so great that there was no point to even trying to replay. It was just like, yeah, Emrek's not beating this regardless of what he does. Um, so... I'm expecting another very good score from Malashevsky on this map. We'll see exactly how well this one goes, as Kriller has been throughout the weekends in this tournament, top scoring a lot of the low approach rate reading maps in course is closed. Yeah, I mean, even this uh, the, the last weekend, Nomad 6, Malashevsky looking like he might have found a bit of a mystery, or was that Banjo potentially? Not sure, but yeah, I mean, this is normally a Kriller pick. I think Kriller has been the one, I believe, in every match where it's been unbanned to pick the Nomad 6. So it's interesting to see Malashevsky go for it instead, uh, instead of maybe leaving it open for Kriller to pick into later. It's because we know how much Kriller likes to play the lower AR Nomads, but he's seen Kriller's score on this. I believe Kriller got uh, 337k, so I mean, if you were saying that Malice was FCing at the point the map disconnected, then Maybe he's more than confident of beating that score. Yeah, let's see. This is uh, starting off really well for both players, though. Better accuracy and full combo intact for Kriller. Looks like reverse choke or maybe a couple side rends dropped for Malashevsky. Slightly lower accuracy as well, but not nearly enough to be decisive at the moment. We get into the first KI time here. The slider overlaps start to coming into play a little bit during this part of the map. Neither player dropping anything major so far, though. Both on fantastic runs, completely destroying these overlapping aim sections. No troubles at all with the reading on this. Again, this is an AR6 map, by the way. Like, this is effectively you're playing with easy or so. Uh, it's a little bit higher approach rate than easy would be for the most part. Usually you're expecting somewhere between AR4 and 5 if you're playing on easy, but uh, it's not like AR6 is that much higher than AR4 or 5 for most players. So this is a fantastic run from both of these players. Halfway through, and we've still got the double FC. Just no issues for either of them. Score lead minuscule in favor of Kriller as he starts to drop a little bit of accuracy in the score lead. Now back towards Malashevsky holding on to that higher act above 99 still. But again, nothing decided whatsoever as both of them continue just dominating on this map there is nothing that's tripping up either of them slight act drops is all we can cast yeah. over right now finally a couple of really difficult section the doubles needing to be cheesed by both of these players Kriller though double tapping pretty much all of it dropping so much accuracy holding on to the FC still but Malashevsky oh was not double tapping but does find the miss the combo is dropped from Malashevsky the accuracy drop is so big for Kriller though that the score lead now 70k in favor of Malashevsky but there is time Kriller is still full comboing if he can hold into the end he will win this pick with this FC. 
He's in a little bit of a deficit just because of the accuracy, but he got through that insanely difficult section. And when I saw that in the map, I couldn't imagine anybody hitting it. Crawler gets through that massive flow aim section. He's now taking the score lead. He just needs to hold on for a little bit longer. Does find the break in Malice on 200, but does find some drops. It's Crawler now in the lead. The Ack from Malashevsky is going to do him favors in this ending section. But as long as Kriller doesn't collapse here, I believe he will be able to take this break point. As long as he just held on a little bit longer, Malice doing his best, but no combo to speak of. Getting through those one thirds, and I think this should be the break point for Kriller here on this insanely well played Nomad 6. That should be still ahead by above 30k into the very end of the map. No chance it goes over, and Kriller makes it happen on that Nomad 6. We talked about this at the start of the map, right? Kriller has been the one picking into these low AR reading picks. He has been top scoring multiple of these low AR and reading strength, picks, hidden or Nomad, throughout the weekend. Like, uh, he fantastic score from him s rank for kriller on that just the one slider break uh as malashevsky missing at the end of that first really difficult section ended up deciding the map the extra combo for kriller all he needed to pull out the win there such a massive pick uh such a massive win for kriller after losing on that first nomad three swings the momentum back if kriller can now convert on his second pick the match will be tied up but i mean just the I mean, the scores we've been seeing so far are just insane overall. Both players getting over 500k in the Nomad 6 is absolutely wild. Uh, Kriller hitting that section, which I just didn't expect really anybody to be hitting in match, is a lovely sight to see. And, you know, what does he pick here? I, I think one element Kriller can maybe lean into is potentially that Hard Rock. We've been seeing Kriller play very well in the Hard Rock so far, and he did win the matchup on the Hard Rock 1 in the last weekend, but does instead go for the DT4 Miss You an absolute classic tech map. DT slapped onto it. Now, both of these players, I believe, have already played this map, and Malashevsky did win in the head-to-head -head comparison, so maybe Kriller here is anticipating that he'll be able to do better this time around. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see exactly how it shakes out. It is a little weird to see, uh, of course, Kriller picking into this versus Malashevsky, who uh, has had very good scores on both this DT4 and, you know, DT gimmick maps, uh, high AR alt reading maps in DT uh, throughout his tournament career. This is typically something that Malashevsky is very, very strong on. Um, so while maybe this particular map feels very good for Kriller, it is still a little odd to see anyone pick into this versus Malashevsky just because he is usually very, very strong on this sort of thing. Uh, but obviously the players know more than we do about their own local scores and how they're feeling on the map. So obviously Kriller feeling very, very good on this one. Yeah, I mean, for all we know, the uh, I believe the 475k he got in match might have been a underperformance. We'll have to find out. But I mean, this map, this map in general is so spiky and is so volatile because of the few difficulty uh, spikes with the key eyes just being really hard to be consistent on. Even a player like Emrek, who, is, who has FC this map in solo in a few times, this has been picked in tournaments, uh, finds issues recreating that score. I think getting realistically more than 500k takes a bit of a miracle run. Yeah, obviously all intro. the maps in this pool are uh, extremely difficult. This one a little slow to start, of course. This is a marathon length map if you don't have DT on. Uh, so as you were saying, Vordy, this intro is a little long. It does take a little bit to get started, uh, but neither player missing on the harder parts of the intro. And now kind of starting off with some of these higher spacing patterns, a couple of the doubles uh, that you tend to see throughout this map as well. This map characterized by lots and lots of cut stream and cut double patterns throughout the map. Higher accuracy for Malashevsky at the start, but combo still good for both players. Yeah, it is going to be those cuts where people collapse. A couple of them showing up here, but for the sake of both of these players, hopefully find no breaks. I mean, the Ack advantage is squarely in the lead for Malice, which means if the combos do end up being even, Malice will have the lead. But here we go into the first real meaty section of the map. Both players the so far on these... hitting all of the doubles. Yeah, the spacing on these cut doubles is just really ridiculous. Nobody missing on them so far. Uh, and the players still going strong with the double FC here. A little bit of cheesing on the accuracy happening for both players. Dropped accuracy for Malachevsky. 
similar accuracy for Kriller, but already down that 2% from the intro section. So higher accuracy still by 2% in favor of Malashevsky. Nobody dropping on any of the longer streams. There's finally a miss for Kriller, and it's Malashevsky still holding on to the FC. 98 accuracy on this is ridiculous during this part of the map. Finally drops down a little bit in terms of the accuracy, but the FC still going strong and seemingly no issues on this second run through of DT4 this weekend. And I mean, this feels almost like an, a repeat of Nomad 3 Kriller improving his score seemingly enough that he should be able to win against the older version of Malashevsky, but we are not seeing that version. Malice is still an FC two thirds into the map. Just how much more damage can he do? This is an unbelievable score already. Uh, the pick is essentially won from Malice. It's just a case of can he get a high score? Unfortunately, he does find the break, so we will not be seeing Miss UDT FC in match, unfortunately, but still phenomenal already. Yeah, really, really strong score from Malashevsky. I mean, uh, there's very few people who can match or beat this kind of score, which, you know, should be above 700k, maybe 800k by the end of the map. Uh, we do have DT multiplier, so it is going to be a little higher than you would expect, maybe around that 800k mark. Um, Triller's score, of course, also very good. Like, this is not a bad score whatsoever. 500k, 600k, maybe by the end of the map, depending how well he combos the ending, is still going to be a very, very strong score. Uh, but just not going to measure up to what is probably 800k plus by Malashevsky on this map. Uh, what do you do, right? Like, you're winning versus the previous iteration of Malashevsky where he put up, you know, a lower score than Kriller during his match versus Emrek. But that's not what you're playing against right now. You have to compete with the 750k plus from Malashevsky on this DT4 right now. Um, and unfortunately, despite feeling good on the pick, Kriller losing the break point here on this dt4 so three to one for malashevsky three break points out of four picks Man. so far by the way uh two break points given up by kriller one break point given up by malashevsky so far so it's been a very back and forth match these players again uh both very very strong on really similar stuff and so picking something that is decisively good for you can be really really tricky in a match like this and, and funny enough, the score Kriller just got would have beaten Malashevsky's score against Emrek by, like, a couple hundred. Like, it would have beaten him, but by a very small margin. But obviously, Malashevsky just showing up, getting 800k. One miss on this map that is, you know, for, for a while, I believe, it was like a bounty map. Like, there was money on the line for that FC in solo. Uh, so that is just... That is, that is awesome to see. Uh, it's going to be Kriller banning out the Hidden 2. It's a little bit interesting because normally Kriller is obviously a really known low AR uh, specialist in some cases. Really good at that skill set. But we saw Malashevsky play that map in. I think getting 418k on how insane of an aim control test that is at AR 7.8. Kriller maybe not feeling like he's up to matching that. Does And we do see the... Friosa Melodia banned from Malashevsky, a little bit unfortunate. Do you like to see that map being played? Yeah, unlucky. We don't get to see Furiosa Melodia. Uh, soft, spot in my, soft spot in my heart for that match, uh, for that map, because uh, when I saw that tiebreaker in 2015, uh, while, while I didn't start casting for a few years later, that was the match when I watched it later on that made me want to start casting this game. So uh, unlucky I don't get to cast over that here. But... Uh, We'll see the next pick for Malashevsky. I mean, he's got three wins under his belt already, has the break point up on Kriller. But again, if you're picking Nomad 4, winning it by not 100k, winning, losing Nomad 6 on your own pick, yeah, the Nomad 3 and DT4 have gone well for you, but it does still make you maybe a little hesitant on some of these maps where you know Kriller can be strong. Um, so going into the DT1 here, Again, Kriller, a very good aim player, can play these high approach rate DT aim picks. Malashevsky, of course, also very strong on it. Um, and I think this is, again, just a, a symptom of the matchup. Kriller and Malashevsky are both very similar players, very good at a lot of the same stuff. So you see a lot of maps like this in this matchup where it feels on paper like either player on their best day uh, could win this sort of a pick. Yeah, 100%. DT1 is a very moment-to-moment -moment skill set. Like, if you're on a good DT1 day, this is definitely a map Malashevsky could FC on a good aim day. But uh, Kriller did win this matchup. I think this was Kriller's most advantageous pick on the head-to-head. -head. 
Uh, but here, Mal Malachowski maybe just more warm on the double time right now and looking to pick it. A nice galvanized banger. I think when I saw this in the editor, before I even realized to actually map this, I saw the first like 50 combo and I was like, oh, this is a galvanized map. It's a classic banger. I think this is a... I don't remember if this is ranked or loved, actually. This is uh, quite an old one, though. It, uh, it got ranked uh, recently, four stars, yeah. by the way. Um, and it is ranked 19 days ago. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's go. Um, that's awesome. Uh, what else is awesome is that Malashevsky asked Kriller before he picked this map what his favorite map in the pool was. Kriller said DT1. Malashevsky picks DT1 right afterwards. Um, so a little bit of camaraderie between the two uh, similar players here. Again, both of them doing very, very well on this. FC still going strong on this AR 10.5, OD 10.4, 260 BPM, eight and a half star DT1. This is a ridiculously high skill cap sort of map. And for both players to still be FCing a third of the way in is absolutely ridiculous. They are both playing out of their minds right now. And obviously this was ranked recently. I actually don't know if there's even a DTFC on leaderboard currently. There is not uh, with hidden or without so. Might see the first one happen here between one of these two players, but obviously does pick up also towards the end. But double FC right now, and this time it's Kriller with the Ack advantage. Not something you normally see. Now it's not having Ack advantage, but on a skill set like this, Kriller is oh. feeling better, but unfortunately does find the break. And now Malice has the lead. I think he maybe knows a little bit of way. cursor dancing from Kriller there after the miss on the slower section. Uh, so a little bit upset with the miss, maybe. Better accuracy for Kriller as well. So you know, was on track to win if they both held similar combo. But Malashevsky now just completely out ahead by over 100k. Even if he misses at this point, I think it's probably over with that second miss from Kriller coming through as well. And uh, now Malashevsky is just about how good of a score can you get? Can you finish it out with the DTFC? Even with 95 accuracy, a DTFC on this in match would be insane. Again, this is over eight and a half stars. And he is still holding on to this FC. We're coming right into the end here. Don't choke. It's just the very end of the map. A couple of jumps left. Can he continue to hold? Going strong through the streams, hitting the overlapping jumps, holding strong on the awkward aim at the end. And there it is. First DTFC on Sound in Motion by Malashevsky in match. 96.1 accuracy. But uh, that is a win regardless and win in a big way for Malashevsky on this one. Fantastic score there. Dude, what was Malice doing between his last match against Emrek and this one, man? He went from a 494k5 miss with 361 max combo to an FC. Like, I don't know if he went, uh, he took his quick, you know, trip to a Buddhist temple and learned the ways of, of the Masters, but he is now playing out of his mind in this match, man. Yeah, I mean, that's a fantastic score from Kriller as well. Um, not to overfocus on Malashevsky's FC, but Kr Kriller also putting up a really good score there. Uh, a couple of misses over two thirds of the way into the map is still a really, really good score on that DT1. That beats out there almost everyone in the world on that sort of a map. But uh, you're up against one of the greatest of all time here. Uh, 746 in match, no big deal. First DTFC in match, no big deal. Uh, as uh, now a 4-1 lead for Malashevsky in this bout. Kriller with the next pick, though, looking to keep it at just the one break point, not give over another pick to Malashevsky. What does he go for? You you had some head-to-head -head stats, Vordy, so I'm interested in your opinion on this. I have my own, I but... Uh, I mean, I mean, that's the thing. I think one of the biggest strengths I thought was like, oh yeah, Kriller picks DT1, he was favored. And now Malashevsky asks you, what's your favorite map? Okay, let me not just not just beat you, but let me get the first FC on this map. Uh, just to really seal it in. And Kriller going for the Nomad 1, which is a little bit of an interesting pick. Very, very aim-heavy map. A relatively high BPM at 260, but... Uh, I mean, Kriller is a really good aim player, but so is Malice. I mean, I think Malice is more so known for his tech proficiency, his skill on gimmicky stuff, but his raw, just pure aim is also really, really good. Um, I don't think we got to see Kriller play this one, but I, I mean, uh, Malice play this one, but I believe he's going to be pretty comfy on a map like this. I think both of these players are going to be very strong on this, right? Like, both of these players are 
very good aim control players and to have good aim control your aim itself also has to be very good uh we saw that on the dt1 the nomad one is just a more comfortable version of that but a little higher star rating too still 260 bpm 8.72 stars ar10 od10 and five minutes long here. The DT1 we just saw was only two minutes and 13 seconds of drain time. This is over five minutes. This is the first marathon length pick of the match that we're gonna see. This map is longer than tiebreaker by one second on the drain time. So this is uh, this is gonna be a real test of just how good the aim is for both of these players as any real slip ups uh, can still be negated through just the sheer length of the map. It's not only about the skill cap at 8.7 stars, it's about the consistency at five minutes. How long can you maintain that kind of a ridiculous skill cap? And uh, not starting out very strong for Krilla here, already a couple of misses in the intro. Uh, so we'll see how the adjustment goes throughout the map for him. But uh, there's another miss from Malashevsky as well. So neither player holding onto the FC early on here. A stark difference compared to that DT1 where we saw FCs from both players two thirds of the way into the map. Uh, this time around, going to be a bit more back and forth, it seems. And if only enough, a fairly comparable map to the DT1. I mean, 260 BPM versus the 261, that is the double time one. Only this map, as you mentioned, is way longer, way more consistent. I believe there's also a few sections where it really spikes up uh, on the key eyes, but no FCs on the board. However, obviously with how long this map is, it is anybody's game. I think the first moment we're going to see a deciding factor is going to be who can hold on the greatest in the first key, which I believe will be happening soon. You can already see the jumps picking up. Both players seem to be recovered after the first breaks. And I mean, with a map this long, it's just any slip up, any little mistake on any aim will be it. The combos are practically identical with just that small athlete to Malice. Yeah, I mean, the score is less than 10k apart right now. Just barely 9,800 for Malashevsky at the moment. Accuracy drops can decide this. Um, so this is still close enough that any major drop is going to change things massively into the next big game section. And there's a slider break for Kriller. Does find the first drop between the two players. How long can Malashevsky hold on to the combo lead is now the question. We've seen both players adjust very well to the map and keep it super close. But this is the first big combo lead for either of them. Accuracy still in his favor and the score lead rocketing towards him now up to about 40k or so. It does still move pretty slowly given the length of the map. Half. But with a 670 combo lead, this is still a big opportunity for Malashevsky. And he holds on through the big one twos and the one third right afterwards, still making this lead bigger and bigger through this map. Now halfway in and a thousand combo for Malashevsky, still going strong. Oh, Another man. big diff spike, and he finally misses. Kriller is able to hit it. He finally has combo lead once again, and now it's up to Kriller to hold instead. Can he claw it back? 67,000 score in favor of Malashevsky, but there is about a 400 combo lead for Kriller to work with, and oh, there it goes. On the stream of all of the patterns to miss on this over eight star Nomad one, that flowing pattern catching Kriller out. Pretty unfortunate, especially, you know, Malice missing on that top right of the vertical jump section, but Kriller holding through is not going to be enough if he can't keep that combo going. And Malice, once again, looking recovered as Kriller seems to have some aim fatigue, finding drops all over the place, not losing just, you know, the misses, but the accuracy as well along with it. But Malice still looking super, super solid here in the ending, not phased from that break earlier on. And I believe without a quarter of the map left, a little bit over a minute, this is just going to be the red carpet rolling out for Malice on this Nomad 1. Yeah, at this point, surmounting a comeback from Killer is going to be almost not doable, I believe. Yeah, aim fatigue is right. I mean, when you play a nearly 9-star aim map on Nomad for 5 minutes, there's going to be fatigue. Uh, especially at 260 BPM, it, it, it just is tough to hold that level of consistency at that high of a star rating for so long. And the fact that Malashevsky is able to seemingly be unfazed by the length of the map is more of an anomaly than anything else going on here. Now up over 100,000 score with the combo lead and act lead to boot. No issues in the back half of this Nomad 1 for Malashevsky. Closing in on 1k combo again near the end of the map. And 
Uh, Kriller, again, I think a good score on this Nomad 1. This kind of map is hard. This is not an easy pick. Usually, you kind of write off Nomad 1 in tournaments and say, ah, you know, ah, it's usually lower star rating than other stuff. It's usually not as hard as a lot of other stuff in the pool. It's usually just, you know, kind of RNG. Whoever hits one diff spike is going to win the map. Not this kind of map. 370k versus 530k are both very, very good scores, but Malashevsky's just better. 160,000 score ahead of Kriller by the end of the map. 1k combo twice in this marathon-length near nine-star Nomad pick. Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, there's there's a... Depending on the starting of the pool, Nomad ones can sometimes be sometimes the easiest, sometimes the most coin flipping maps. But there is a critical mass of aim that once it's reached, the Nomad one goes from being one of the easier picks to one of the hardest to FC when you're just given no opportunity to recover when it's just an onslaught of jumps. And Malashevsky getting two miss, 99% over 1k combo, I believe, getting 1k combo twice. Just a really, really good show of aim consistency, and that is going to be another breakpoint for Malashevsky going into his next pick. And I mean, Kriller is all back is already basically against the wall here. There's not much time left for him to start turning things around. Yeah, you're now down five to one in a best of 13. Next pick to Malashevsky. If he wins his own pick here, you now have to go from. 6-1 to 7-6. You have to win six points in a row, uh, and that includes two other picks from Malashevsky after this. So uh, this is a very crucial point for Kriller. Uh, you really, really want to win this pick right here. If you can take a break point off of Malashevsky in this one, start to turn the momentum around a little bit, uh, that is really where I think Kriller can find an in back into this match. Uh, but Hidden One still going to make that very difficult here for Kriller. It's Doomsday by Architects, uh, the hectic map set. And uh, once again, I th think uh, if I'm right about this, actually some alt aim, 125 BPM on this one. Yeah, I mean, we're staying in the high BPM lane with this pick. Malashevsky winning the two high BPM A maps, and it's like, I'm just going to play it again. Uh, 250 BPM, effectively, it's 125, but you double it. It's 250. Oh, um, oh I think Kriller oh. maybe not having his tablet ready. Not sure if that's going to be on a board. I think it is, but literally on the spinner. Um, not a massive issue, but uh, yeah, I mean, with how... Oh, apparently there wasn't oh, any hidden. We did not have oh, that's why. <laughs> that's it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That is so, fair. So uh, getting the hidden on and then going back to the hidden one, playing it actually with hidden instead of with no mod. Uh, always good to have that mod applied. I mean, I mean, it's, it's funny enough, this hidden is AR-10, which means, you know, you can kind of think about it as like a hidden hard rock with big circles. Um, and you, you basically get this hidden one. Uh, OD-10 as well, so the hard rock comparison is valid, but I think what really highlights the hidden on a pick like this is going to be the patterning, not necessarily the approach rating, of course. Um, lots of awkward linear jump patterns you can already see, um, lots of types of jumps that are just difficult with hidden, and even though it is AR-10, the 250 BPM jumps does still make this relatively dense. Yeah, it's the combination of the BPM and all these wide angle jumps, the anti-aim patterns. You have to go from very high cursor velocity to hit the high spacing 250 BPM jumps. I mean, yeah, this is the awkward aim pick, but it's still above eight stars. Uh, so the spacing on even the wide angle patterns is still really, really tough for just about anyone to hit. Um, so going from trying to hit those to now you need to stop, hit another note underneath it, and then go back to the super high cursor velocity, the very high spacing right afterwards can make it really, really tricky. So both players doing a pretty good job of it so far. Relatively close within 10K here at the start. Slight combo lead, slight accuracy lead Malachevsky. But Kriller still not too far behind right on his heels as we get into another big diff spike sector. I believe this was a map that was untouched in both Malachevsky and Kriller's match. So we don't really know the level of comfort on this, but imagine the map this consistent you're going to be expecting to see scores similar to the nomad one both players holding big combos after those early breaks it's not really going to come down to who falls first can kriller find the chance to get a malice break and maybe hold on through i mean malice look at how ridiculous this is from both players kriller finally drops but 
both of them hitting the entirety of that big dip spike before that. Malashevsky hits the breakdown right afterwards into even more of this high spacing stuff. Seemingly no issues, still near the 99% on the FC. Uh, Kriller again, or on the reverse choke, excuse me, both of them did miss very early on into this map. But again, this is a very good score from Kriller being able to hit a full dip spike there and just miss once right afterwards on the breakdown is incredible from him, but just even more so from Malashevsky still holding strong with that 99 accuracy on the reverse choke. No misses during the middle of the map at all yet. Finally does find one. Kriller is now hitting this section. Can he continue to hold on? It's a 95k score lead for Malashevsky, and Kriller now has the combo lead, but does find the miss afterwards as well. Kriller on hidden ones throughout this tournament has been really incredible, but unfortunately just not quite enough in this match to be able to hold on when it counted two thirds of the way in does find another miss. It maybe feels like that aim fatigue again. When you play aim maps that are this high star rating, that are this consistent, there is a point where even top players like Kriller find that their hand just gets fatigued, it gets tired, but Malashevsky, after the break, still holding through, he's just been able to play this last section of the map a little bit more consistently, um, holding onto that greater secondary combo and find another break from Kriller on this section, finding another one. It's just that aim fatigue once again, and Malashevsky just not phased in the slightest, covering through and seemingly just as if he just started this map and is completely fresh, just holding on through this last section as the map only has a quarter left to go. And it's another instance where the score lead for Malice is already too great, I believe. And I mean, what can you do against this monster performance? <laughs> this is just insane. Like, the, the, the ridiculous spacing on these super wide angle jumps. I mean, you're playing 250 BPM sentimental skyscraper linears and triangle jumps along with some of the bursts in this map as well yeah it's an ar10 but that just doesn't matter when the map is this hard when the map is this high bpm uh, this is an absolutely insane score for malachevsky he actually hits that ending as well 600k on this is completely absurd uh yeah that is just an insane score from malachevsky Kriller as well putting up a fantastic score 415k on this is very very good i think he'll be hard pressed to find more than a handful of players who can do better than that. Um, but unfortunately for Kriller, Malashevsky is one of them and does so in a big way. One and a half times the score from Kriller, nearly double the combo as well. Only two misses on that two map misses. is uh, obscene. Like, what is that, man? I think it's the second time we got, I think he got two misses on the Nomad one as well. Uh, just doesn't and he got zero misses on the dt1 and uh, after playing three different over eight star aim maps of varying uh you know types he has only dropped four times like that just I, if that doesn't highlight his consistency on aim i don't know what does and now malashevsky up 6-1 just needs to get one more more uh, point here and it's over as kriller the next one to pick can he find it in himself to win one? Picks the hidden four. Yeah, this map is absolutely brutal. Uh, vein of hidden tech, but just pretty varied in its patterning, and it's just so difficult to be consistent on, especially at CS5. Yeah, CS5, super streamy, 200 BPM tech pick here. Um, again, one of the uh, one of the older map sets in this pool alongside stuff like that hidden one. Um, this is just... I, I I don't know. This is the highest star rating pick in the hidden pool, by the way. This is 8.23 star tech map with hidden. Um, it's going to be difficult no matter who you are. Both of these players, though, uh, I think two of the players that I would really want to see play this map. In fact, all four players left in this tournament. Malashevsky, Enry, Worst HR player, Kriller, all incredibly good hidden tech players. So uh, I think on a map like this, you're just guaranteed a good matchup no matter who's playing it. And uh, wow, that was some incredible cheese uh, from both players on that first stream. At least Kriller, uh, I saw, did not move the cursor off the middle of that stream. Does find a slider break right afterwards. Malachev's going to match it with a miss. And uh, you're already getting a taste of just how ridiculous the streams in this map can be with these early misses for both players. Better accuracy for Kriller at the start, but at ever so slight score lead as we're still right at the beginning of this one, just about a quarter of the way in. And this might be one of the most brutal maps in the pool. Both players are so proficient at hidden tech, yet already finding some breaks. Kriller as well, dropping 
just because of the variety of the patterns and CS5 only makes it harder. As well as, look at these, this is 300 BPM, by the way. These are 300 yeah, BPM bursts. <laughs> and <laughs> Malachowski <laughs> getting through the 300 BPM, hitting the Wiggles. I don't know how he's still holding. Does finally find a break. Now up 40k score against Kriller. Both players dropping a lot of accuracy on that section, both down in the 95% range. Combo lead once again back to Kriller. Another big drop from Malashevsky. Drops a ton of combo and accuracy on that one, but a miss from Kriller right afterwards. It's still only 30k, mind you, but that's a big Ooh. drop from Kriller. The chain miss on the one-third triangles there. Malashevsky able to hit them and secures now a 50k score lead for himself because of that combo lead as well. Only about 80 combo, but the accuracy doing a little bit of work here for Malashevsky to help keep him out ahead. Three quarters of the way in, Kriller down by 56k. It's all on Malachevsky. If he holds, there's no chance for Kriller to come back. But if he can find a miss and Kriller can hold, it's still winnable here. Match point, tournament life on the line for Kriller. There goes Malachevsky, but Kriller misses right afterwards, and that should be the match. That should be the tournament for Kriller, and that should be top three losers bracket grand finals for Malachevsky. Yeah, and I mean, Kriller having a phenomenal performance this tournament. Um, a massive improvement over his last placing in the 2023 Corsair's close. Uh, still doing phenomenally. I think just doing better than most people expected and really showing that he is not just a good tournament player. He's not just one of the best tournament, if not the best tournament player in Germany. He's one of the best tournament players in the world. Um, unfortunately, Malashevsky is just a different breed, really, and will be winning this match 7-1, but still props to Krilla for getting fourth overall. Yeah, many of the best 1v1 tournament players in the world in Corsair is closed. So to get top four is a huge achievement in and of itself. Kriller, again, originally qualified in as seed number nine. So to make top four is an overperformance by three rounds from where you were expected to place based on qualifiers. Uh, so this is a still fantastic showing for Kriller. Um, unfortunately, you're up against the first seed in the tournament, someone who was top two last year, someone who had winner's bracket advantage going into grand finals last year, and somebody who is widely renowned as one of, if not the best tournament player in the world in Malashevsky. So a tough opponent, no matter who you are. And uh, Kriller fought valiantly, a lot of close maps, but uh, unfortunately only one map win for Kriller in this matchup and Malashevsky advancing into the top three to face the loser of winner's finals, Enri versus worst HR player. That match coming up right after this. Uh, we again did have to delay uh, the match between Malashevsky and Emrek. So Enri versus worst HR player could not be broadcast live. Instead, we have a recording of the match in full which will be broadcast here with commentary uh, by casters who do not know the outcome of the match. So they'll be going into it blind as if it were live. Uh, so stick around right after this. We'll be getting that winner's finals up. But that is it for this match. A couple of quick shout outs. First to Momokai for sponsoring Corsair's Closed. Uh, thank you to Momokai for that sponsorship. We do have uh, a code to use on their website as well as an exclusive Corsair's Closed tap trio from Momokai. So check them out. You can also check out the Corsair's manga by typing the code exclamation mark Corsair's in chat. And you'll be able to go check that out on their Twitter page. But I believe that is it from us. Yeah, that'll be it for us. Uh, thank you once again to everybody for watching. Congratulations to Malashevsky for the win and to Kriller for the top four finish. We'll see you back here in just a couple of minutes for Enry versus Worst HR player in the winner's finals.